So talking about reproductive rights, right. uh, women have made a lot of advances and, and progress. Men's rights activists feel like they have virtually no reproductive rights. Do you think they do? Sure they do. Uh, men have the right to take responsibility for contraception and birth control. And then if, uh, if they have uh, fathered a child, uh, taking responsibility for that child's upbringing. Uh, this whole fight on reproductive rights right now is definitely, there's no question it's part of the backlash. If you think about it, and actually I was at a United Nations conference and heard a woman from um, uh, Brazil talking about the fight in her country for reproductive rights for women and for girls. And there the Catholic Church has tremendous influence on government policy making and on the laws that are made. Uh, the Catholic Church. And uh, of course, uh, not only is abortion illegal, uh, but birth control is illegal. And she said, uh, she was talking about the current issues in the feminist movement there, and it was all about uh, reproductive rights, having access to contraception, having access to safe abortion and reproductive health care. And she was apologetic. She said, we're, um, we're consumed by these issues because it is how women reach autonomy. And I knew this intellectually, but hearing it from her mouth, I was struck again by how central having control over your own fertility is to your own sense of self and uh, well-being and free agency. If you are constantly impregnated against your will, in a marriage, out of a marriage, doesn't matter, you have very little control over your life because you're responsible for uh, the upbringing of children and you're responsible for their health and their care and their education and their feeding. Um, and so having the ability to decide if you'll ever have children and how many and under what conditions and when is powerful. It's very powerful because it makes a woman a full human being, able to make her own decisions and to control her own destiny. And patriarchy depends on uh, men being able to control that in women. And that is what the fight is over. Uh, now then, of course, those most opposed to abortion rights and access to abortion, access even to birth control, we're not a fight in this country, again, that we thought we had the movement generally thought was over in the 1960s, and it's the fight to access contraception. That's the fight now we're in, in addition to keeping abortion uh, safe and accessible and legal. Well, men know this, um, and so access to birth control, access to uh, abortion has always been something they have struggled throughout all of history to control. Now, women are always going to have the control of that, and women will do whatever it takes to control it, including um, give up their own lives. Women will uh, seek a back alley abortion. Women will self-induce abortion, whatever it takes to control her fertility, and she will do it uh, no matter what, even if it means her own life. Um, and. Uh, that's how determined females around the world are to have the control. Without that control, your life is uh, a gamble. Your life is a gamble. And you, uh, you, if you have too many children, you will be poor. You will not be able to invest in them properly. And women especially who are, who are raising children on their own face economic discrimination in the workplace. Um, and they're doing everything they can just to keep it together. So without that control, um, you have ceded uh, your, uh, your autonomy to, to uh, whoever can impregnate you. So it's very central. It always has been, and it's why, uh, as part of the backlash, there is this effort to, again, make abortion inaccessible, illegal, uh, to keep contraception and birth control away from women. And, um, but women aren't going back. That's all there is to it. Absolutely. <laughs> MRAs feel like if women have the right to choose pro-choice, 
mm -hmm. if the women have the right to choose to have an abortion, then men should also have a right, some kind of right to choose whether or not to be a father. And so they feel like, okay, well, if a woman can choose to have an abortion or keep the baby, if she keeps the baby, well, first of all, if she has an abortion, say he wanted the baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's just no getting Well, he should that. have thought of that early on. Uh, that should be a discussion between a man and a woman before you're faced with an unintended, unplanned pregnancy, and in her case, an unwanted pregnancy. So if you're going to be having sex uh, that could result in pregnancy, and you haven't had this conversation, with the woman that you're having sex with. You better have it, you better have it fast. What happens if uh, birth control fails? What happens if you're not using birth control or contraception? Um, so you better have that conversation up front. That's when the man has the ability to make decisions, uh, either not to engage in sex or to use uh, condoms and to use other forms of contraception. So that's where his role comes in. Once he's impregnated her, she's the one now faced with continuing a pregnancy, faced with the health risks that accompany pregnancy, uh, and over a, over a third of all pregnancies, even in the United States, have complications and problems for her. Uh, and ultimately, he can walk away, and she has to worry about how to feed and clothe and educate and care for and raise another human being. And all too frequently, men do walk away. Just walk away. So his rights have to be um, exercised early before a decision is made. And they better be making the decision together. They better have agreed that a conception is what they're willing to risk or that that's what they want. Um, but once she's pregnant, uh, all decisions must be hers because ultimately um, she is the most impacted. There's just no question. And she ultimately has the responsibility for that child. So the men's rights act activists want, uh, they're pushing an initiative to have a consent form that is signed once the baby is born. So say the woman decides to keep the baby, MRAs feel like they should not be enslaved to 18 years of child support if they would have wanted to have an abortion. So they feel once the baby is born, they could sign away their responsibilities to the child where they have no financial responsibility to take care of that child. Well, see, this is where they should have had this conversation early on and made a decision. If they're going to engage in sexual intercourse that could result in a pregnancy, they better have thought all that through. That's where their uh, role comes in. Um, once there's been uh, a conception and a pregnancy is carried to term, they have a responsibility because they, they participated equally in the creation of that. Um, so it's too late then for them to claim they have a right to walk away. Although they do walk away, you know, hey, they do it all the time. Um, so I don't know what they're so worried about. What they're really worried about is that they have to take responsibility. Um, and that they can't just uh, engage in sexual intercourse with anyone they want to at any time and, and not bear any responsibility for contraception, uh, any responsibility for the outcome. I mean, there's no question that sexual intercourse leads to pregnancy. So think about that. <laughs> and where is it that a man can have total control over what happens? It's on the front end of that. He can prevent pregnancy. He can prevent pregnancy, or he can agree to uh, a pregnancy and to being a responsible parent. Uh, that's where his decisions come in. 